Welcome to the tutorial on application of binary numbers, boolean logic and gates. In this tutorial, our main focus will be on the hardware design, which is also called as the logic design. So here we will learn how to represent and store information inside a computer, how to use the principles of symbolic logic to design gates and lastly how to use gates to construct circuits that can perform operations such as adding and comparing numbers and fetching instructions. So coming to the first system that is the binary number system also called as the binary numbering system. So this is used as a computer's internal storage technique which is different from the way people represent information in the daily lives. So the information which is inside a digital computer is stored as a collection of binary data. Now how this binary representation of numeric and textual information is done? So binary number system or the binary numbering system is represented as base 2 which is built from 1s and zeros, and each position is a power of 2. Why power of 2? Because it ha a binary number system has just two numbers 0 and 1. So that is why each position is represented as a power of 2. So here is one example which they have shown as to how the binary numbering system can be represented as a power of 2. So this first one is the MSP bit and the last one is the LSP bit. So if we begin from the LSP bit we can see that this is the 0th digit, 1st digit, 2nd digit and the 3rd digit. So that is why we have represent this as 1 into 2 to the power 0, 0 into 2 to the power 1, 1 into 2 to the power 2 and 1 into 2 to the power 3. Similarly, we have the decimal numbering system which is represented as base 10. So here each position is of power 10. So you can see we have taken an example of 3052 and in a similar man manner like the binary number system we have represented in terms of 0 digit, 1st digit, 2nd digit and 3rd digit but here it will be in terms of power of 10. But for our computers we are mainly focusing on the binary representation Whereas we have different type of numbering systems like we have binary numbering system, we have decimal numbering system, hexadecimal, octal, various type of numbering systems are available. But for computers we, we usually use the binary numbering system because it is easy to represent different levels of voltages either high or low because it is represented in terms of 0 or 1. Now coming to the binary to decimal conversion table. So here you can see I have represented the decimal numbers 0 to 15 and 16 to 31 and its equivalent is represented in terms of binary on the left hand side. So the representation of the binary number corresponding to the decimal 0 and 1 is almost the same then it varies. So if you compare 0 to 15 and 16 to 31 the numbering system actually repeats itself. So when I am going to represent a 0 in terms of a 4 bit number I am going to represent in binary as four zeros and if I am going to represent a binary number zero in terms of five bits then it is going to be all five zeros. 
so continuing with the representation of integers so decimal integers are basically converted into binary integers and we can represent the largest unsigned integer as 2 to the power k minus 1 where k corresponds to the number of bits so if you have 4 bits the largest integer will be 2 to the power 4 minus 1 that is equal to 15 when we are going to represent the signed integers the signed integers will always be represented with the sign it could be the positive or it could be the negative now since we are talking about representing the numeric and textual information these will be represented in terms of characters which are mapped into the binary numbers because we know that the textual information is nothing but a character so in order to represent that we use the ASCII code set which is 8 bits per character or we have 256 character codes another way of representing is the unicode code set that is 16 bits per character or 65,536 character codes and the text strings can be represented as sequences of characters in some encoding algorithm so let us now see how to represent sound and image so the multimedia data is sampled to store in digital form it may or may not have any detectable differences so first we will see how to represent the sound data so sound data first has to be digitized for storage in a computer when I talk about digitizing it means that periodic sampling of amplitude values so as you can see here this is a signal wherein we are performing the sampling in time so that is why we have represented different levels of sampled values in terms of amplitude and this is the sampling in time so if you want to represent any signal in terms of digital data it has to be sampled in time as well as in time in amplitude so when you sample both in time and amplitude only then it is possible to represent a digital uh, it's possible to represent a signal in digital form and more about this you will be able to understand when you look into the when you look into the course of digital communication wherein they show you how a signal can be sampled and quantized quantization is nothing but sampling in amplitude so both the process of sampling and quantization has to be performed in order to represent a signal in digital form so you can see here figure A shows the sampling the original signal and the figure B shows the recreating the signal from the sampled values and this is all based upon the sampling theorem it, what's important for you to understand is that in order to represent a sound waveform in terms of binary you have to perform both sampling and quantization that is sample in amplitude and sample in time now how to represent an image to represent an image what we basically do is we sample the image by reading the color and the intensity values at even intervals across the image so each sampled point will be a pixel so that is why you can see this is an image of a smiley which is being sampled and each of this box is called as a pixel and image quality depends upon the number of bits at each pixel 
So what we have done here to this particular image is that this image I have considered for easy understanding to be a black and white image or a binary image wherein I am having either 0 or 1. So you have only two colors. You have a black color and you have a white color. So we have mapped the white color to a binary bit 0 and the black point to a binary bit 1. So that is very much evident in this bit map image. So this way it is possible to represent an image in terms of binary form. Now coming to the reliability of binary representation. So usually electronic devices are considered to be most reliable in a bistable environment and computers are also bistable so that is why we go for binary representation. Now what do I mean by bistable environment is that you are able to distinguish only two electronic states. For example, if, you, if I'm considering the flow of current, I can say whether the current flow is there or not. Moreover, I can say the direction of the flow. So bistable environment means there are only two possible states, either on or either off. So that is why Binary representation can be considered as most reliable because it makes use of just two states 0 and 1. Now coming to the binary storage devices. So one example of a binary storage device is the magnetic core and this is the historic device for the computer memory which was being used. So it has the tiny magnetic rings which indicates the flow of current that sets the direction of magnetic field. So you can see if the direction of the magnetic field is towards this side that is anti-clockwise then the direction of the current is towards the right. So this indicates a binary zero. And if the direction of the magnetic field is towards the clockwise direction, the direction of the current is towards the left, which is represented by binary 1. So in the basic magnetic core, the binary values 0 and 1 are used to represent the direction of the magnetic field. Another binary storage device which is very widely used is the transistor and the transistor is a solid state switch which permits or blocks the current flow. So you can see this is the transistor and in the transistor we have the collector, we have the base and the emitter and this acts like a switch, the transistor acts like a switch. When the switch is closed the current will flow, when the switch is open there is no flow of current. So what I can say about this binary storage device is that this is used as a control input to cause a change in the state. So when this as mentioned earlier when the switch is closed current will flow when the switch is open the current will not flow and this binary storage device that is a transistor is constructed from the semiconductor devices and you would have already studied in the basic electronics how a transistor is formed and how a transistor functions as a switch. Now coming to the gates. So gates are the ones which are used mainly in the hardware design. So here we map the hardware devices to the boolean logic. And uh, this design is more complex in terms of logic but not in terms of electronics. And it's easy to convert from logic to hardware design which can be automated. And here in this particular slide as you can see 
we have three basic gates the and gate or gate and the not gate so uh, in the diagram we have made use of two inputs a and b so to represent the and gate i have represented it as a dot b which is also called as a boolean expression and for an or gate a plus b and for a not gate it is represented as a bar so you can see the truth tables here for an and gate 0 0 gives a 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 for an OR gate 0 0 is 0 then 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is also 1. So when we talk about the NOT gate the NOT gate is a complement of the input. So if we have a 0 at the input side at the output side it will be the complement that will be 1. So vice versa if you have an input with the binary 1 at the output it will be a binary 0. Now finally coming to the building of computer circuits as to how the computer circuits are built. So basically a circuit is a collection of logic gates and we have seen the basic three logic gates that is the AND gate, OR gate and the NOT gate. We have other gates also, we have universal gates, we have XOR gates, XNOR gates. So there is a large collection of logic gates. So a circuit is basically a collection of logic gates and this transforms a set of binary inputs into a set of binary outputs. So the values of the outputs will depend only on the current value of the inputs. So as you can see this is the circuit which is shown and represented as circuit C. We have M inputs and these M inputs will produce N number of outputs. So when we talk about the combinational circuits, a combinational circuit will have no cycles in them. When I say no cycles in them means none of the outputs will feed back into their own inputs. So you can see here there are various inputs so in a combinational circuit none of these outputs will feed back into their own inputs. So such a circuit will be called as a combinational circuit. So when we begin to understand the concept of digital system design we need to understand what is a combinational circuit what is combinational logic and to understand what is combinational logic and combinational circuits we need to have a basic understanding of the numbering system and the gates that is the various types of gates. So to conclude I can summarize that digital computers are binary representations of the data that is it can be numbers text multimedia which consists of the sound or the image so binary values can or create a bistable environment making the computers more reliable bistable environment means we have just two states 0 and 1 boolean logic will easily map into electronic hardware and the fourth point is that the circuits are constructed using the boolean expressions as an abstraction and we have seen that earlier how a boolean expression is represented for an AND gate OR gate and for an OR gate and computational and control circuits can be built from the boolean gates. So I hope you have understood as to how and why it is necessary to learn digital logic, why boolean expression is important how the boolean logic is incorporated in the computers and what are the storage devices that we are using.